there's a lot of ways in which neuroscience impacts the law. Joe just recognised that neuroscience is, you know, there's new advances. They want to understand what are the implications for the law. That does not mean to say that judges are going to immediately accept neuroscience knowledge. But they want to know. And they know they need to learn more about... And somebody will talk about brain imaging and they will talk about the strengths and the limitations. You know, what conclusions can we draw from brain imaging on, let's say, lie detection, and what can we not say? You know, because judges also have to make decisions on whether to allow neuroscience information into the court, the Fry hearing, um, the Dobert hearing. So they have to learn more, and they were never trained in neuroscience. So there's certainly a lot of interest. Yes, I think it's made me more understanding. It really has given me insight into why people behave as they do. And I think it's making, has made me over time, slowly, I think, slowly, um, a more accepting person. You know, my wife, for example, you know, if she gets upset about something, I think, well, well, Maybe today at work there are, are, are things that have made her upset uh, because she's not usually like this. I think of that with my children. And I recognise it's true for me too. And I think one example that we can all get some insight from is the Netherlands, when there is a question about whether somebody is responsible for the crime that they have committed, they get sent to an assessment centre. I don't know for how long, it may be two, three, four weeks, but they get assessed, they get very fully assessed, and those assessments include neuropsychological assessments, basically brain functioning assessments. And the Scientists there, or the clinical scientists there, create a five-point scale of responsibility. And they make an assignment of this individual in terms of their degree of responsibility. And that's presented to the judge. My colleagues in the Netherlands tell me the judges can't deal with five points, it's too many. But what they do is they compress that scale to a three-point scale. Responsible, not responsible, something in between. But that also determines sentencing. What I like about that system, even though it's probably not perfect, is that it's standardised. Um, you don't have several centres throughout the country, you have one. And, you know, what I wonder is, what if it's only then it may not be applying to every single legal case, but it might apply to more cases than it's been applied to now. And could there be a trusted body of individuals who would objectively try and come to a judgment using more objective data than we do at the moment, which could include more objective measurements and assessments? I think they're placed, I think rather like in the United Kingdom, they're placed in secure hospitals. It's like prison, but it's more on rehabilitation. I think the liberty and freedom of the individual is not taken away as much. But of course, secure, depending on the level of dangerousness. My understanding is that the downside of this is that the person is not released until they are viewed as no longer dangerous. So that might mean they serve a longer sentence in a secure hospital than in a prison. But the, the legal system could say, look, they won't serve any longer than they would have served in prison, perhaps, if it was viewed that they are 
less responsible, they are less blameworthy, 